Hey guys, Paradox Cubing here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys some techniques to reduce cube rotations in F2L. So the first thing you can do is, of course, do the algorithms in a different angle. So, for example, um, this case is just a really simple trigger, like this. But you can also do this in a different angle and not and avoid the cube rotation. So usually people would go like this and then do the algorithm, but if, if if you see it like this, you can just go like this. Perform the algorithm in a different angle to solve the situation. So that's the first thing you can do to, uh, to avoid a cube rotation. And the next thing I'm going to show you is avoiding cube rotations for when you have a pair solved, like for example this. So if you want to insert this pair, most people would probably cube rotate like this and then insert it like that. But if, if you see a pair like this, or you solved, solved a pair and you need to insert it, there's a few different things you could do here. Um, the simplest, I would say, is to just do, um, is to insert it like this. F prime, L, F, L prime. And that would solve it like that. And uh, for the right face, it would look like this. F, R prime, F prime, R. And it would solve right here. So that's really easy because it's really short and it's a quick algorithm and it avoids any cube rotations. So the only awkward move there is F, which isn't very bad. So the next way to insert this is by doing something like this. Um, a lowercase r, u, r prime, u prime, and then just do a middle slice to revert this back to norm normal. And then here we have the pair is solved. So I'll go over that again. So if you have something like this, you can do lowercase r, u, r prime, u prime, and then the middle slice. You can also do it like this with your left hand. And then you can also do it um, uh, in, in when it's in the back too. But the only reason I don't like doing this is because of that middle move. But most of the time I would just insert it like this. Because really quick, like four moves. So we've won over solving cases um, in different angles to avoid cube rotation. So you wouldn't have to cube rotate in that angle and then solve it and then cube rotate back. And then we uh, looked at how to insert solve pairs. So the next thing you could do is, for example, cases for cases like this, you can just learn a really quick algorithm that goes like this and just it's really it's really quick and solves it. So I have videos on alg on F two L algorithms um, that you can check out, but there, you could use algorithms for um, really uh, for tricky cases like that because um, most people would probably split it up like this, and then Q rotate to, to use that em empty slot, and then Q rotate back and solve it like that. So it's really fast to, to learn just a really quick algorithm. And the next one is pretty helpful because you get cases like this pretty often. So it's when you have only one empty slot left, and it's right here, and you just need to solve this case. Everything else is solved, and then. Most people would probably put use this empty slot to split these pieces up like this, and then solve it like that. But a faster way to avoid the cube rotation is to use the empty slot in a different way. What you can do is put the corner piece back here, hide it, move the edge piece over, and now it's set up like you need it to be, and then you can just solve it. This way is really efficient, it's pretty easy because there's no cube rotations, and the moves are really simple to do as well. And yeah, I just really like that case because it comes up a lot and it's pretty annoying when it does, so it's really easy to use something like that. Like, so the other thing, for example, in a case like this, where you only have one empty slot, and um, if you put it here, it would be really weird doing a B move. So you would have to do a cube rotation, which would be pretty good, but you could also do a D move and then solve it like that. So this one is... Uh, your choice you could do a cube rotation or a d move you can you can do d moves but in this case i'd recommend just doing a cube rotation you can do that you can do d moves you can uh you can solve the case from a different angle uh, without having to cube rotate to the angle that you're used to you can learn an algorithm and uh you can use those other ways that i showed you to insert solved pairs without a cube rotation 
So that's pretty much it for techniques you can use to solve cube rotations. What I'd really recommend doing is to stop timing yourself with F2L for a while and just um, do F2L. And for every case that you get, try to think, try to just go through the case and think of um, really faster ways, faster than you usually do, to solve the case and maybe um, figure out figure out ways with less cube rotations. So just um, experiment in F2L and stuff with different cases. And I would say learn really sh the shortest algorithms and the quicker ones. Don't waste your time on the long and kind of awkward algorithms that aren't very helpful anyways. So now I'm just going to do a example solve of some of the cases that I get in F2L and show you how you can reduce the cube rotations that you, that you get. So now that we have the cross done, I see this pair. So I would split that up. So this is the part where I'd probably say you should do a D move or a cube rotation because it's just faster. It's no, not really a more efficient way to do this. So um, now I see this pair. So I see I see it pairs up right there. I can I can just break that up and then insert it back here. So I'm inserting it. I paired it up and inserted it in different angles using my left hand and not my right hand for the whole thing. So I I I just avoided a cube rotation there. So the next thing I see is these two, and I'm just going to split those up, pair them up, and then I can easily insert it like that from a different angle. So for this one, I would go like this to pair them up and then insert it. So as you saw, that was almost rotational so too well. I had one cube rotation for the first one, just one cube rotation. And yeah, I would recommend doing one or two cube rotations for F2L. Uh, um, I think that would, that's best to do just one or two. If you do like three, I guess three is okay, but try to keep it down to two at max, and four is just a bit too much, so you shouldn't be doing four cube rotations in your after. Yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Um, I hope this helped you reduce some of your cube rotations, and yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.